We talk a lot about how we want organisational alignment. We want every department, every team and every individual to be aligned with our organisation's purpose and strategic direction. Now sure, there are tools like strategy maps that many leaders use to do this, but let me share with you something you may never have heard of that works a lot better at aligning your organisation to your strategy. Strategy maps, like for the balance scorecard, are probably the most commonly used visual representation of strategy on a single page, but because they are organised by the four perspectives of the balance scorecard and not the layers of the organisation, no one can see on a single page the organisation-wide alignment to strategy. The power of strategy maps lies in their succinct and visual presentation of strategic objectives in a way that highlights the cause-effect relationships between those objectives. But to align to this strategic direction, each department and each team, and each individual has to create their own strategy map on a separate page. It's nothing short of a revelation to see the big picture of your organization's strategic alignment in a single view on a single page. Pump's results map goes beyond the strategy map and can give you this big picture of organizational alignment from your corporate strategy through to the smallest team. This is an example of Pump's results map. Your first reaction is likely a little bit of overwhelm and that's in part because you probably haven't seen it before and also in part because it does contain a fairly rich amount of information. But once you understand the four basic parts of a results map's anatomy, you'll immediately see their power and versatility, uh, not only for aligning your organization to your strategic direction, but also to align all of your KPIs and performance measures to every important goal throughout the organization as well. The first part of a results map's anatomy are those zones, those four colored layers. Now these layers align to the natural layers of your organization's hierarchy and, well, most of the time at least, we only need four zones in a results map. The pink zone is the layer right in the center of the results map and it's the layer representing your organization's overall purpose for existing, its mission and its vision. Your board of directors, if you have one, but also with your executive team, they own the pink layer. The green zone is the next layer out and it's the layer representing your corporate strategic direction. Your executive team owns this green layer. The blue zone is the third layer out and it's the layer representing each department in your organization. Or if you're a process oriented organization, it represents your core business processes. Each departmental slice of the blue layer is owned by departmental managers with their teams. The orange zone is the fourth layer out and it's the layer representing teams or business units or sub processes. Now slices of the orange layer are owned by each of those teams. So you can see that these four zones are arranged in a way that we can see how strategy devolves or aligns outwards from the center. But can you also appreciate how this makes it easy for any team or individual to see how their work contributes through to the organization's strategic direction and purpose? Now this will become even more apparent as we move on to the second part of a results maps anatomy. The second part of the results maps anatomy um, is those colored bubbles uh, that sit in each of the four zones. Each one of these bubbles is a measurable performance result or a well-written goal. Now, by the way, there is no place for action within a results map. If we try to measure things like trained staff in negotiation, we'll just end up with silly and trivial measures like number of staff trained. But we can put actions or improvement initiatives or projects around the outside of results map to show which results those actions should be impacting on. There's also no place for weasel words or vague language on a results map. If we try to measure something like enhance innovation, we'll end up with uh, an uninformative measure like number of new ideas generated, or maybe we will end up with no measure at all. Measures or KPIs are the next part of a results map's anatomy, so we'll come back to them in just a few moments. 
Now each bubble on a results map contains a unique performance result that is expressed as though it were a future fact, um, a bit like these. Medicinal chocolate production causes no harm in the world. People never tire of the work they do here. Teams reach their targets without manager intervention. The right decisions are made and executed through collaboration, not approval. Now, wording performance results as specific future facts makes it easier to visualise the state we want to reach, and that makes it easier to find meaningful measures. And measures, or KPIs, are the third part of the results map's anatomy. Now, we add measures to the results map next to their respective result bubble. For medicinal chocolate production causes no harm in the world, a measure is B impact score which is a score out of 200 for social and environmental impact using the B impact assessment. For people never tire of the work they do here, a measure is Q12 engagement score, which is the employee engagement score calculated using Gallup's Q12 survey system. For teams reach their targets without manager intervention, a measure is team target reach rate, which is the percentage of all the team targets that were set, which the team reached without requiring management direction or problem solving. For the right decisions are made and executed through collaboration, not approval, a measure is decisions requiring approval, which is the number of team decisions that could not be made without seeking the approval of the manager or other authority in order to proceed. Now, all these results and their measures become an even stronger alignment tool when they're linked together in cause-effect relationships, and relationships are the fourth part of a results map's anatomy. The relationships are those lines or connectors between and among the result bubbles, but the relationships tell a fuller story than just cause-effect. There are three main relationship types on a results map. The first is a cause-effect relationship, which means that by achieving the cause result, the effect result is more likely to be achieved. Now, some of these are lead-lag relationships, but not all of them. For example, the orange result, the right decisions are made and executed through collaboration, not approval, that will cause an impact on the blue result. Teams reach their targets without manager intervention. The second is a companion relationship, which means that both results in this companion relationship are synergistic and they need to be achieved together. For example, the orange result, cacao farms are entirely organic, and the orange result, all non-cacao ingredients come from producers committed to OECD goals, they both need to be improved together. Having one without the other won't create the desired effect on their blue result, chocolate production is carbon and, posit and forest positive. The third is a conflict relationship, which means that achieving one result in the conflict relationship puts the other result at high risk of being sabotaged or undermined. So for example, the orange result, cacao farms have high yields of high quality beans, and the orange result, cacao farms are entirely organic. They cannot both be maximised. Maximising the yields of cacao beans can be achieved through chemicals and genetic modification, but that conflicts with the desire to be entirely organic. A strategy is often like this. It's not linear and not purely cause-effect, but the results map allows us to tell the story of strategy that acknowledges this and makes it easier to execute anyway. And that means it also helps us to see where we need to balance the performance of some results when they cannot all be maximised simultaneously. From the entire performance measurement methodology that PUMP is, the results map is at its core. It creates that strategic alignment every leader is looking for. It engages people in taking ownership of performance. It aligns the right measures to the right goals so those people have the feedback to improve performance. And one of my very first results map clients nicknamed it the Where's Wally diagram, or you might be more familiar with Where's Waldo. Now he nicknamed it this for two reasons. Firstly, it, it was because the results map is admittedly quite a busy diagram on first glance. 
Not quite as bad as looking at a Where's Wally cartoon though, and you can successfully explain a results map in, in less than a minute. And secondly, and mainly, it was because once Wally found themselves in the map, Wally knew where they fit in the organisation. Wally had a line of sight from their work results through to the organisation's priorities and purpose, and that is what true alignment really is. There is another power of the results map, and that is that it's framework agnostic. It works with any strategic management tool that you're already using, whether it's balanced scorecard, OKRs, stakeholder theory, Porter's five forces, blue ocean strategy, value chain analysis, you name it. The results map does what these tools do not. It brings your entire strategy together into a single view of organizational alignment. But the power of the results map doesn't come for free. Just watching this video has probably raised even more questions for you, in fact. And that's because a useful results map, it requires that we think deliberately about our strategy and our organization's contribution to it in a new and a different way. It requires that we are deliberate in how we articulate our goals, how we design our measures or KPIs, and how we involve people to create ownership and true accountability. And that's what the rest of the pump methodology can guide you to do. You can learn how to create news results maps to make your strategy measurable easier to communicate and to build organizational alignment. Just contact us, um, one of your local pump partners, and you'll find a link to them in the description below this video. In the meantime, I'd love to learn from you. How do you create organizational alignment to strategy in your organization? Please share your ideas in the comments.